Good afternoon, Atlanta Music Project Young Musician and Friends. I'm Avril, and I'm happy to welcome you to another edition of AMP Online Masterclasses, sponsored by the Chestnut Family Foundation. This class is tuba warm-ups and tone quality, taught by Casey Forbes. I invite you to participate by playing or playing along at home and by answering questions in the chat. If you'd like, you can also have your video shown to demonstrate a concept as we go through the class. All right, Miss Casey, you can begin. All right, good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. Once again, my name is Casey Forbes, and I'm here today to talk to you guys about tuba warm-ups and actually some of the warm-ups that I like to do throughout my daily routine as a tuba player. Um, one of the things I like to start off with, let me just give you a little outline. One is uh, breathing, starting out with breathing. From breathing, we lead into mouthpiece buzzing. From leading from mouthpiece buzzing, we can go into long tones. From long tones, we go into um, lip slurs, tonguing, and also scales. And that's uh, the main things that we're going to talk about today in this wonderful masterclass. Um, first, let's start off with breathing exercises. Is um, I like to start off with being nice and relaxed because as tour players, and even as musicians, we love to play relaxed. We get our best tone from having good air intake going in and also coming out. So first I like to do one is to start breathing in for four counts and breathing out for four counts using our diaphragm here, making sure when we breathe in, our body is to expand. We should feel this expand. And then when we breathe out, it's almost like we're pushing. So it's almost like we expand here with our air and then we let it out. So it's almost like we're small, like it starts off as a big balloon and it's like a little needle you just pinch and it just slowly comes out the body. So um, I'm going to put the metronome on at about 65, and I'm going to do this two times. I believe we have somebody listening here. Uh, um, we have the Pearl, um, Ian, and Noah. Okay. Let's see. I don't know if we can pick them up. I hope I'm doing this right. Sorry. Let's see here. Now, Mr. Taylor, I don't do anything, correct? I don't have to... Oh, no, no, no. You don't have to worry. You don't have okay. to worry. Okay. I wasn't you, sure if I needed to press to let them in or anything like that. wasn't sure. Um, no, no, no. You don't, you don't have to worry at all. You can just um, keep going. They've actually um, logged out. And, uh, <laughs> That's weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure they'll log back in um, as, as we go on, so it's okay. Okay. Well, first, like I said, uh, with breathing exercises, um, to get an understanding about it, um, breathing exercises help with sustaining tone. It also helps with intonation. It also helps with flexibility. And of course, with our tone quality, having good air, of course, like I said before, good air creates great tone. Great air, great tone. So as I said before, I would like to do breathing in for four counts and breathing out for four counts. And I'm going to do this twice with the Met at 65. So once again, it's going to be in for four, out for four. So two, three, four, and. Then I go in for three, out for four counts. And I do that twice. And then I do in for two. Alpha four counts twice, and then I do in for one alpha four counts twice. And then I just take a relaxed deep breath in and out. So like I said before, I did four counts. Now I'm going to go three, two, then one twice each. Six, seven, eight, and All right, so I did that. That's like I said, you, there's numerous different ways you can do breathing exercises. 
there's that way. There's also, if you happen to take a tube, you can take a small, I think this is about three inches or so tube here. You can also use this as well as part of your breathing exercises. It's sometimes people like to use this to help because pretty much, you know, we're going into a bigger mouthpiece, but this kind of helps with breathing also as well. So I'm going to demonstrate this breathing in for uh, three counts in alpha four and then two, then one. So this is demonstrating here with the actual PVC pipe. See? So. All right. And of course, sometimes we're talking, you feel a little bit, if you do it a lot, you tend to feel a little bit, a little hazy, a little lightheaded. And if you are doing it right, you feel lightheaded, you're definitely doing it correctly. Okay. So like I said, these are some great breathing exercises you can use. You can also use this as well, breathing or PVC, PVC, PVC pipe, or you can also use a bread bag. I'm sorry, I do not have that with me, but that's also one as well. After I do breathing exercises, I like to go into mouthpiece buzzing. And uh, a lot of people don't like to do it, and some that do, I prefer it because uh, mouthpiece buzzing helps with your armature. This also helps with breathing as well before you get to your, your big axe. I like to call the big old axe right here. So um, first I like to do is actually buzzing like long tones, but particularly on F. So what I'm gonna do right now is hey, buzz on. F. Like yes, I'm sorry. All right, um, and this is excellent information. So for those that are out there now, um, if you don't already, make sure you get your mouthpiece out and have it ready so that you can um, partake in this exercise. All right. Okay, so what I like to do is uh, breathe. Um, you can try, you can even add breathing exercises with your mouthpiece, or you could just practice buzzing. I like to practice buzzing, just practicing buzzing F. Um, if you have a tuner, you can put your tuner on and actually give you that pitch, or you can play the pitch on the tuba. And for you guys, what I'll do first is play F on tuba. So you get your pitch there. So I got a little pitch there. All right. And then what I will do is actually put the metronome on and actually buzz F for four, four counts and rest for four and buzz four. So I'm gonna do this twice. So eight, two, three. Two, three. All right, so just to make sure getting understanding of a buzz, you wanna make sure there's a small hole here some of us like to buzz where our lips are closed. I have here actually a mouthpiece visualizer. You actually see, so when I buzz an F, you can see a small hole here. If I close that hole, you're not really gonna get a buzzing sound. It's not really gonna vibrate. You're gonna hear this. You notice here it's like really tight. And you notice my lips were really vibrating. But if you are vibrating, you should see. And it takes a lot of air to do that. Okay. Are there any questions thus far? Mr. Taylor, I don't know why, but it's like I noticed on mine that I see like muted. So I just want to see if there's any questions that uh, either Ian or Noah want to ask. Um, <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. So if at any point throughout um, you have any questions, you can feel free to just enter into the chat the question and we'll get an answer for you. Um, and this is also a good opportunity, um, Ms. Casey. Um, let me know if you would like and we can take um, one of our participants off of mute and they can demonstrate um, some of the uh, exercises that you're doing as well and then you can critique and offer feedback and 
and that sort of thing. Okay. So is it possible for me to get uh, either one of them to buzz an F so I can hear how they're doing? Or I just want to make sure that um, I'm able to hear them so, or if they have so questions I'm, on mouthpiece buzzing. Yep, I'm going to unmute now. I just have them muted. So oh, okay. Gonna, or actually now we're requesting um, them to unmute. There we go. You hear me? Yes. And hello, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> Okay. All right, who am I speaking with? Is this Noah or Ian? Ian. Ian, you did a really good job, man. Just making sure you want to keep it with a nice full sound. Okay, go all the way to the end past four. Give it its full value of a whole note. But other than that, that was a really, really good job. Thank it's you. gonna tell me with a good buzz sound that you're gonna have a really, really good tone on your mouthpiece. Thank you. All right. So now after I go from there, from buzzing just an F, sometimes I like to try to buzz and try to go from F all the way down to concert B flat. Literally going F, E flat, D, C, and then B flat. So I'll start on F and then I go to E flat. And it's like I just keep adding on as I go. So even with resting between, so it sounds like this. So I know where F is for me. If you're not sure of where your F is, once again, you can play it on the tuba and you can go back and forth. Another thing I like to add, if you have a burp, which is a little breathing ethical little device that can go on your mouthpiece on the side part of your receiver. I'm sorry I don't have one of those with me. You can actually buzz and play along with your instrument as well. So going from F to E flat, playing it just to get in your ear. So just hearing those pitches there. So I'm bringing there, so, and going in half notes. Okay, and then I'll go from uh, E flat to D. So, E. I rest and go D to C. And then C to B flat. Okay. Now for me, it took me some while to master that, but the more you do it, the better you get it, I promise. So is there anybody that would like to demonstrate going from F to E flat, D to C, and then C to B flat? Okay. Awesome, we have the mic, good. Are you there? Yes. All right, Ian, when you were doing that, when your tones came out, they came out really well. You just need to work on making sure that you're buzzing the correct pitch. So making sure you're listening. Another thing that can help you with that, and if you have a tuner, a tuner in front of you, I do. that can help you as well with the pitch. 
So it was just whenever you were buzzing, you were just a little bit high on pitch, just a little bit. Even though the pitches you were playing on tuba was correct. But try to make sure you try to listen for that pitch. Another thing we like to do is when you're playing your F bomb, so that F there, you can also hum it. Most of the time with boys, I always like to tell them to find their manly voice, their manly voice now. And just you can also practice singing that pitch as well. Okay, so those are some things that can help you when you're mouthpiece buzzing. But other than that, that was a pretty good job. Just next time when you do it, focus on trying to actually match that pitch of what you're playing compared to what you're buzzing, if that makes sense to you. Yes. Thank Great. You. Great. Good. So after mouthpiece buzzing, I like to go into the daily routine, which is long tones. I know some people say, oh, my gosh, long tones. But long tones for us is so important because as tuba players, most of the time what we do in bands is hold out notes forever. <laughs> and nobody wants a bad sound. You know, with tuba players, we're that bottom of the ensemble. We build tone quality from us. So if we have a beautiful tone, we can make a band sound amazing with just our tone. So having a beautiful, long, sustained notes uh, helps out an ensemble, even whenever we're playing music or what have you. So doing long tones, uh, playing individual notes, being able to play them, helping with intonation, being able to play those notes in tune as well. That's as far as with intonation. So um, if you could, um, I have a shorter version of long tones. Most of the time people start with whole notes, but on the, uh, I have a handout. Uh, Mr. Aver, if you don't mind going to the tuba warmups. As you guys can see here, uh, in this tuba warm up here, I like to start off with number one. Um, these warm ups are consistent from different authors. Um, I love this because it has all these different levels that you can use. So I'm going to be using different levels throughout this for the rest of this class. So with number one, number two, and number three, those are your typical Remington long tones. You can play those at 60. You can go slower than that, or you can go faster. I prefer to go between 60 and 65 just to get the fact of length. And being able to control your sound at that slower tempo is always harder to play at slow tempos. So I like to focus on that also to work on sustaining our notes. So if you can see here with number one, I am going to uh, demonstrate it for you using number one. And it starts on F. Everything goes back to F uh, on number one. Uh, on number two, everything goes back to low B flat. Number three, everything goes back to B flat in the staff. So um, with that, the good part is some players or members, I like to play this with a tuner to uh, see how well I can stay in tune, keeping that F and switch into the pitch and be able to go right back in tune and stay and hear where the pitches lie between F and E natural, F, E flat, F to D, and so far and so far. So like I said before, I'm going to demonstrate this is number one. And when you have the two beats of rest on beat four of that, taking a deep breath in and think about clearing the sound and playing not just the first two notes, but also going to the end. I like to treat each three notes as phrases. So literally going a three bar phrase or three note phrase throughout this. So I'm going to tempo for this one right now at 65. So this will be number one. Here we go. So that's how number one is played. Question. Yes. Miss Casey, what um, what volume, what dynamic level are you doing those at? Um, I tend to play them in about a mezzo forte. 
Okay. Um, and sometimes it depends. Some people like to practice them soft. Some people like to de uh, demonstrate in different ranges because that doesn't hurt because sometimes if I like to move my air, like really, really move it, I'll practice going at forte just to make a bigger sound, just be able to go those three notes at a full sound. Okay. Okay. So, but okay. yeah, I tend to go about a mezzo forte sound there. Okay. So, good question. <laughs> Is there any other questions on uh, number one? Could we, um, could we get a demonstration from one of the students from e either yeah. Ethan or Noah? Hello, this is Noah and I will be demonstrating number one. All right. Thank you, Noah. Hey there. Hello. <laughs> really good at very first yeah. when you started off you start off very very tense and once you relax that's when that tone started to come out of you Thank so you. just be aware of that when you start just stay nice and relaxed okay another thing is is when you hear those rattling sounds you can go back and actually buzz this as well another thing i like to do as well you can also buzz this so just keep that in mind um when you say buzz, now when you say buzz this what do you mean on the mouthpiece absolutely absolutely you can literally take your mouthpiece out and practicing that first one going <sighs> and those hearing just being able to buzz through that now sometimes um you might have to take a little bit more air because it takes a lot more air to buzz than it does when you just have your actual instrument because you have a lot helping you out when you have it, when your mouthpiece is in. But when you're buzzing, yeah, if you take a breath, it's okay. But just practicing, just getting that secure F. Because like when you started off, it was like really, really tight. But once you relax, that F started to come out. It wasn't a tight F. F. It wasn't no tension. A lot of tension there, excuse me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. All right. So moving from there, you can go to number two, which practices on the low range of the tuba, um, which takes a little bit more air and also not just that, but we also open up a little bit more when we're playing as well. So um, I'm going to demonstrate here on this one as well. I'm trying to move. There we go. So this one here. Now, if you have a forgot to add this. If you have a three valve tuba, of course you play your low uh, B natural, one, two, and three, or and what have you, your low F, one and three. But if you have a four valve instrument, your low C should be played with the fourth valve, okay? Because the tendency for us on the low, especially one and three, the tendency is to be sharp. And even with the one, two, and three, we're gonna get sharper, okay? So I tend to use two and four for your low B natural and even for your low E, just to help with the tendency of uh, the intonation of that note. It helps bring down the pitch when you're playing it two and four. Or when you're playing your low C using the alternate finger in the fourth valve, because like I said, that helps with intonation as well. Because the tendency for the one and three combo and the one, two, three is to be sharp. So but anyway, on this, I'm demonstrating number two for you guys. So the tempo is still at 65. 
So here is this one here. So here's number two. Three. I tend to play this one roughly about a mezzo piano, mezzo forte, because my goal is to make it through the whole phrase. I know if I play any louder than that, I feel as though I'm going to have to take a breath in between. Wow. So that's why I play with that. And also due to, I know this sounds crazy, but I use breathing exercises so much just due to the fact of having asthma. And my breathing exercises actually helped me to be able to stay even further than what I was just doing right there. So at that tempo, at that low register there, and also when I'm playing, it's a nice open sound. And I almost feel like you're fogging up a window. So in the F range, number one, you're thinking of medium speeds of air. But number two, it's kind of like in between slow and medium slow of air that you're producing down in that low range. Okay. Would someone like to demonstrate number two? Well, you know what, Miss Casey, I was also yeah. looking at um, so that we can make sure that we cover um, the concepts that you want to get. Maybe we should go on to the next concept. And I absolutely even yeah. though I feel like this one being in the lower register may be more challenging. So as as we are doing these and as Miss Casey is demonstrating and talking, make sure that you all are doing these at home um, and then that way you'll get a get the full um benefit of all of this so let's go on to the next concept okay um after long tones like i said one two and three are great for long tones number four is a lip slur long tone actually um lip slurs of course is slurring between two partials without using your tongue um as you can see in number four you tongue the first note you slur to the second you slur down to the low b flat so this here is going from the b flat the fifth and then down to the root of the low B flat. So it's an octave. You got an A natural, then the fifth of the E, and then a low A, A flat to G, G flat, F, C, low F, E natural, low B natural, and low E. So uh, this is also a lip slur as well, but it's also a long tone incorporated as well. So I'll uh, demonstrate number four for you guys. So th what I like about this one is, is that you're literally putting one, two, and three combination all together in one. That's literally what you're doing. That's what I've noticed about this. So if you don't have time to do a long routine warm up, you can use number four as a slow to help for a quicker warm up to get you through if you need to. That just saying if you would like to, like if you don't have time to do number one, two, three, you can go to number four because number four is going to give you almost the same thing, a corporate, but it's incorporating lip slur and going down on each one. So here is number four for you. Like I said, this one goes down. I'm sorry, Mr. Emma, I'm going to be moving along here for you. No, um, certainly, certainly. So, and, and, you know, here? I, think, I yeah. think it's okay. Oops. Um, I think that's okay because one thing we want the, the people that are listening to know as well is that these are concepts that you don't spend. Um, how, how long do you spend working on each concept? You know what I mean? Like um, yeah. per day in right. your practice routine. So. Um, do are they spending 20 minutes on each on each concept that you speak of? Are they spending three minutes? Like like what do you think? Um, sometimes I think sometimes people spend um, like on this one it says it's like a five minute. This could be like a five minute warm up routine. Okay. 
if you were to go through the motions of it. But for me, I feel like I spent at least a minute to two minutes on each one, but that's just me. So everybody has their own particular way. So even one through five, I've known colleagues of mine to be like, yeah, I spent at least 20 minutes on that, you know, and like they're able to expand on the warm up. So as throughout these sheets, you have one that has five minutes and then it just expands um, at the bottom where you see six and seven, that changed that five minute into a 10 minute routine just by adding those two. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. So, I see. Mm -hmm. And the idea is you want to hit all of these different areas daily in your, yes. in your practice routine. So what I tend to do for me and for my students is I'll circle individual ones like, look, I really want you to focus on this because sometimes these things help throughout an etude or throughout a solo that you could be working on. For example, um, of course, one through four is, you know, helps with lyrical, being the same notes, beautiful notes, holding notes, and what have you. Um, and also technical wise is getting, getting those lips going and get the blood flowing through the lips. That's all, another reason why I like through, one through four. But number five is also a lip slur, but it's involved with quarter notes and it's just going throughout the partials of each valve combination. So if you like, I'll do the first line of uh, number five, which is another type of lip slur that I have my students do as well. So, so, so this is number five, just that first line. Now on this one, you can continue through all the way down to the two, four combination of the tuba, but I'm just gonna do uh, first and second or open and second for B flat tuba players here. So this is 65. from lip slurs and like I said there's a ton of different ways you can do lip slurs there's that way slur between those partials if you scroll down you can look at where it says 10 minute level two number six talks about how to actually slur between those two notes to slow away and then number seven actually has you connect them okay and what I mean by that is if you look at number one in number six going there <laughs> So it has you tongue the first note and then tongue and then slur up. And notice it has a little crescendo there. That helps you get, that actually kind of helps you because you got to move air to get up there. So uh, I think that's a really cool thing that a uh, composer has done to do that. So that way when you get to number seven. <laughs> So that's why you're able to put them all together there. So it has that one. And then if you're going to the second page, that also has different types of lip slurs on it, on page two, where you start going up in the top range for the tuba, staying in the staff. And that's eight and nine. Then number 10 and 11 has you go from the low B flat. And then if you look at number 12, which is where we get to after you've done your lip slurs, if you look at number 12, it talks about tonguing, okay? Tonguing exercises, which is also a great part of a daily routine. Um, as you can see in number 12, it has that quarter note equals 100. If you do not feel comfortable at 100, you can slow that down and work your way up to 100 and go past that. So um, for me, what I like to do, I start at about 90 and I go up, sometimes I go past 100, of course, sometimes I go up to 120. Um, there's different types of tonguing. You have the regular single tonguing. You have multiple tonguing, which is triple and double tonguing. And uh, like I said, throughout these exercises, they have all the different types of exercises for tonguing. So in number 12, I can demonstrate, here we go, the first measures of that. And like I said, you go all the way through this throughout the, uh, each of the piece. Let me see here. Ah, okay. Sorry, I thought somebody had a question, something popping up. Uh, did somebody have a question? You might have questions? Uh, not yet, not yet, but okay. you all are um, welcome to ask any questions that you may have throughout. 
Okay. Okay, so nobody's, okay. So on uh, number 12, I'll demonstrate here. You know, it would be nice here. So that here. So I have the beat going and taking that pitch, one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one. So keeping that subdividing in your head as you're tonguing. Now, in most cases too, as well, when we're tonguing, if you're tonguing the B flat in the staff, your tongue is pretty much going to be hitting pretty much at, if this is your tooth. Your tongue normally hits right there behind it. As you go lower, to me, I feel like your tongue lowers as well. Now, it doesn't go like past like your lower teeth. But I also think sometimes that our tongue tends to lower just a little bit as we go lower. Because if playing a low B flat with your tongue hitting at the top of your teeth, you, I don't believe you get a good sound doing that. So, but this one here, like I said, this one here has you starting off uh, on the B flat and the staff. So here. So those are going there. So I started on B flat and then I went to A natural. And of course you can go all the way down chromatically in half steps. Okay, on that exercise. That's a great exercise to work out on tonguing. If you do not feel comfortable in doing 16th notes, there is no harm in practicing just doing quarter notes, practicing quarter notes and leaving from quarter notes and say, okay, I'm going to try eighth notes. And then when you get more comfortable, then you can go the 16th notes. That's if you would like to do that, if you don't feel comfortable with the 16th. Or you can start the 16th off very slowly and work your way up in speed. That it's okay to do. Don't ever feel uncomfortable about slowing down a tempo to learn something. That's something that I've been trying to incorporate to anybody. It's okay to practice something slow to get better at it. Great. So, any questions on that? So, um, so we've covered um, breathing. We covered buzzing. Um, we covered long, long tones. Tone lip slurs, and then articulation. Mm -hmm. um, and these are all areas that we want to hit every day because when we're playing our music, we, this is what our music is made up of. So these are ways of practicing the situations that we encounter in our music. Um, and so, Ms. Casey, you also have some information on scales, right? Absolutely. Um, if you go to on this one here, I, I really, really dig this on page, uh, should be on page four. Um, of this book here. One of the things um, that I love about it, it's uh, on page four, number 29. This goes through flexibility, but it goes through the different parts of the scales. Um, this one goes through all our favorites, all 12 major scale right here. And uh, what I like to do with my students that I have right now, we've been focusing on our GMEA scales but incorporating this as well. So on this one here, um, if you look, I love to do the ones that uh, I start off with, of course, I start off with C. I'm a tuba player that plays C tuba. So of course I'm gonna play with the open C one and then I move throughout. So just to get a hint of what this sounds like, um, you can practice it at any tempo. Uh, this is it here at 65. So this is on C scale here. So this is like where you're literally practicing slurring. This helps out with air and control and getting you up to those pitches up in the staff. Okay. So that's a really, really great one to do. This is like a great flexibility to do through your scales. And once you've done this, then you can actually, what I like to do is once I play that, I'll go back and actually play the scale. So, and then I'll go to the next one, which in my case will be D flat, or most of this, they'll start on concert B flat, and then they'll go to E flat. Um, each one is a challenge. So, um, 
the most challenging ones, of course, are the ones in the lower octave range where it takes a lot of air. So those are always challenging, but they're good for you because well, it's helping you move a lot of air, which is what you have to do anyway when you're playing up in the higher range as well. So. Ms. Casey, we're, we're approaching the last five minutes of the mm -hmm. lesson. Um, and I think this is a great one for, uh, for the kids to demonstrate um, and get some feedback. So I'm going to open it back up to Ian and Noah mm -hmm. to, to play the exercise, uh, the, the scale passage in C that you just played. Okay. Well, actually, if you want to, Mr. Abel, they can probably, I know for a fact, do number 271 where it says the uh, B flat. So, oh, okay. That makes sense because you're on a C tuba. Are they on B flat tubas? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, Ian and Noah, would you all look at look down at number 271? And um, that one is based off of the B flat scale. Okay. Great. Would you demonstrate? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is Ian. Great. Thank you, Ian. And we... Um, it was it was in right. We heard you at first. Yeah, yeah we we hear you. We okay. do. Okay. Yeah. And um, Miss Casey, what tempo are we thinking? Are we like one and two and what tempo? Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Um, you can put it. Yeah, that slow. Um, I've even had it to the point where I've had certain students actually put the quarter note at 65 and actually play each note per beat. So it's like playing okay. each note as a quarter note instead of an A. So you can also do that as well as slowing it down. Okay, okay. Yeah, I just got to remember, keep in mind, everything's slurred. You want to try that again for me? Yes. Keep it all slurred. You tell the first note and move your air. Think about crescendoing the last four notes. Okay. Take a good breath. So what I would advise you to do to practice this, you can practice on playing the first four notes. And when you feel comfortable, add a note on as you go. But it seems like it's the last four notes that you have going up to the B flat. So if you sell on the low B flat and just go. Can you try that for me? So it's the last four notes plus the dotted half note. Okay. You got B flat, D, F, A natural, B flat. There you go. You got it in your ear. Now put that whole, put the whole two measures together now. There you go. There you go. There you go. That was much better. You just got to get used to doing it and keeping your air, not being afraid to play out. 
Don't be afraid of it. Because as soon as you shy away from it, your air shies away from it. And it's like, oh, I'm so scared. Don't be scared of it. That's what practicing is about, not being scared to play. You get to play, make mistakes, and it's okay because you're in the practice room. It's you, and your goal is to practice to make it better. Miss Casey, um, yes, sir. I want you to think of a quick 45-second summary of all of the things that you uh, <laughs> talked about. I want you to um, pack it up into uh, something that they can take home with them as well, um, just, just to make these things stick even further. And I think it was a great, um, a, a really good session. Um, just remember um, that breathing is very important. Good breath is very important. Um, your daily routine is important. I, I don't care how short it is, even if it's five minutes. But all these different exercises that we incorporated, you can do within five minutes. Um, and you can do within 10. It just depends on how well you expand it on how well and vital you use it. The more you do these things, the better you become. The last time I checked, the only time success becomes before work is in a dictionary. Thank you, you very go. much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better. So um, thank you all, everyone, for tuning in. Um, Ian and Noah, I, we really appreciate you all. Um, demonstrating and, and uh, putting yourselves out there throughout the lesson. Um, it will pay off. It will pay off. All right. We will see you all soon. All right.